Good morning, commissioners, ladies and gentlemen of the community. I'm Deputy Wood with the Mason County Sheriff's Office. Um, and the reason why I wanted to come today was to fight for my job. And yesterday, a form was, you know, a le letter was brought out for the briefing about the budget. And it mentioned in it that during your retreat, what you were working for was a responsible and goal-driven county budget. And I would like to encourage you to look at the budget in that framework instead of an across-the-board cut. It needs to be responsible and goal-driven and thoughtful in that capacity. And that's what I'm asking you to do today and in the coming weeks. So I appreciate your time, and I appreciate the community for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Conley Watson, and I live at 140 East Fox Lane. And uh, I did some research on the on the Secretary of State. There's three copies One for each. And uh, I would like to point out before, uh, this is uh, on um, page one, uh, County Commissioners, RCW 3632-120. And you start off by uh, bringing it up to date. Before an elected official may assume office, election results must be certified, and the winner was swear to an oath of a of, of office. If a qualified candidate also posts a bond, and I don't know if any of you have, it's not the responsibility of the county auditor to verify a bond. And uh, over the last 30 years, I have been in the venue over the, uh, John Tarrant came, uh, he was the, the mayor of Shelton he came three months in a row, and he asked for one sixteenth of the county to add to the taxes. That would have netted you a hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars a year. Um, then the, the next thing of, on there was a dodge in the code, and the uh, what we have witnessed in this room is uh, of marijuana, the bay, uh, Shelton Bay, and yesterday the, uh, the public was here. And uh, I th think that you should familiarize yourself with the Secretary of State budget. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Betty Whiting and I'm a member of the Lake Cushman community and I'm here to ask you to please reconsider the reduction of the sheriff's time. We at Lake Cushman are out of the area and, uh, to the point where our response from the county was jeopardized and so we in 2008 made up a contract with the sheriff's department to have a deputy come up and help us uh, by putting in hours up at our um, homeowners association. And it's worked very well. Our burglary and theft rate has been gigantic this year. And we do have a deputy up there now, which is very good, and we've worked hand in hand with the department, and it's worked very well. And with this budget reduction, this will be jeopardized. The other thing is that the residents and the business owners of this county depend on you to make a priority of giving them the protection that they deserve. And by reducing this budget in this way is ridiculous. It can't be done. The, pe the patrol people, if they don't get to keep their job, then they are worked to death because of the amount of, of time and effort it takes to cover the county. So 
you commissioners, and I, I just asked the question earlier, and Randy was kind enough to give me the answer, receive a 1% raise for being a commissioner. Now, when there's priorities, I would think that you would consider that a no-no because you have to set priorities. And as a resident of this county, my priority is to have proper police protection, which you are obligated to give us. So please look at this budget and consider the things that are important and give the sheriff that ability because they go and they get people from the school and they're outstanding, but they only stay long enough to Man. get uh, the experience so they can go where they can get better pay and better timed work. So please consider this. Thank you. Thank you. Morning, commissioners. My name is Scott Johnson. I'm the sheriff of Pacific County. And I'm here to represent both our citizens and the citizens of Mason County. I'm in the very same boat as Sheriff Salisbury is here, and I've had the opportunity to know him now for seven years. I know he's very responsible with his budget. I don't think you could find a sheriff that cares more about the citizens and people of the county than Sheriff Salisbury does, and I know that this is just a horrible thing to have to go through. I spent hours in my office with staff yesterday trying to figure out where I need to cut people. None of us in the region are overstaffed. We always struggle for calls. I talk lots on the phone with Sheriff Salisbury, and uh, I, I know he's always trying to figure out how he can provide the best service with the minimal amount of resources that he already has. What you may not know is that this affects the entire region of sheriffs. Thurston, Lewis, Grace Harbor, Mason, and Pacific County are all in the region, and because we're all short, we share resources when uh, we can. For example, we don't have a SWAT team, and we've had rare occasion where we've needed to call upon Mason County to provide that to us. But we always reciprocate and make sure we give back in other ways. We'll come up here and, and uh, participate in oral boards or other things so that you don't lose money by providing service to us. And I just want you to know that this will affect the citizens of all the other counties besides just those of you in the room. And I certainly hope that uh, this good turnout today sends a strong message that one place that can't be cut is law enforcement. I know our commissioners always say, well, we have to fill potholes too. I'll tell you what, I've, I've never talked to anybody that didn't feel it's more important than when you call 911 and somebody come to your door than having the potholes filled. And, and I see a lot of head shaking with that. So I appreciate the time that you've given me to speak on this and hope that you very carefully consider the, the proposed cuts. Thank, Thank you. Sure. Good morning. My name is John Snaza. I'm the Thurston County Sheriff. And like uh, Sheriff Johnson and Sheriff Salisbury, uh, we are all held accountable for our budgets. As a matter of fact, if you looked at any of our budgets in law enforcement, you'd say that we do audits almost every year and we are held accountable for everything we do and what we do to the citizens. By making a budget cut that is proposed today, you are affecting the lives of everyone in this community. Not just Mason County. Mason County is part of Region 3, which Sheriff Johnson spoke of. Pacific, Mason, Grace Harbor, Thurston, and Lewis. We all work together. We're all held accountable for our actions. And I can tell you that you are putting a price on what public safety looks like. You are deciding what a life is worth. You are deciding what a collision is worth. You are deciding that these citizens, not only in this room, but in this community, don't deserve public safety. They deserve to become victims. And by doing these reductions is what you're making everybody here a victim because we hold ourselves to the highest standard of public safety. That's what we were elected to do. That's what Sheriff Salisbury was elected to do. And with your help, we can make these communities safe. But if you do the reductions that you are talking about and doing, you are reducing public safety, and you've already put a price on what a life is worth. Right now, it's worth just about $900,000. 
Next year, it's 17% of his budget. That's a lot of money. That that's what you decided a person's life or what a victim should look like. And that's what's happening when you do these budget cuts. It's hard enough out there. And now you're taking away all the tools that you have helped him acquire over the years. And now you're just taking it all the way. And you're making this community less safe by doing what you're doing. I'm sorry that I have to say it, but I think that all our community needs to know the truth. Without public safety, you're not safe. And that's what you're doing is cutting a budget about public safety and having to decide what your priorities are. Is, prior, is your priority people's safety in this community? People safe, people live, work, and play here. If they're safe here, then they will be here. So thank you. And I apologize that 15 minutes is embarrassing for a commission to have when you're deciding whether you're going to cut somebody's budget by 17%. And you see all these people in here want to hear that. So thank Sheriff, you. Sheriff, if I could just, uh, I just want to clarify a couple of points. We're not hearing the budget cuts today. That's You're doing a budget, $900,000. I appreciate that. You have people in front of you begging for their job. I'm sorry. And you got a raise. Actually, I've taken a, I'm taking uh, No, it listen, doesn't listen, matter. Listen, you sure. guys voted hey, on a raise. Sure. Listen, thank I'm you. sorry. Listen. I appreciate your passion for this uh, and the rhetoric, I do. Um, but I, I just want to clarify a couple of points as we move forward. Uh, one is we're not debating the budget reduction proposals today. That is next week. And so the other part of that is we are also not looking to cut the budget 17.5% next year. Okay, so that is a fact. Um, I think there has been some misunderstanding as to what we are looking for. Uh, it's a 7.3 reduction this year and the remainder of the 17.5% next year. It's 17.5% based on June 30th's number. So I just I want to be clear about that. Um, we do have more time for public comment and so I'd again welcome anybody else up. Dean Secor. I live in Hoodsport, retired from law enforcement. And while this is not about budget cuts, it's eventually going to be about that. These people in here in uniform go out there every day and form the line between safety and anarchy. For that, some of them get murdered. I've had eight friends shot and killed in the line of duty. In some instances, they couldn't get a backup. So if you cut deputies, they could go out on a call, need a backup, and not have it arrive. The other half of that is the citizens in here pay taxes to have that happen. And it can't occur if there's not enough support. Somebody will read this to the criminals because they can't read themselves, and they'll know that it becomes safe to go out and caper because if the deputy in Cushman is not there, Cushman's wide open. Yeah, it only has one escape route. We can probably catch him coming out. But they learn these things and take, take full advantage of it and victimize the citizens and victimize law enforcement also. It's the only job that I know of, besides the military, where people kill you <coughs> for what you're doing because you're trying to stop them from committing crimes. They're criminals, not community members. Cutting a budget can only result in more crime which can result in more costs. It's going to tie down the courts. It's going to tie up the jail system if there's enough deputies to make the arrest. If I saw in an article, had some of this had to do with the unions. The problem is when unions collectively bargain with councils or commissioners, it's a mutual agreement. So it's not just on the union. I saw another thing where it said employees that weren't needed, excessive employees, and I don't know what departments had encompassed. But the last time I got up here and spoke, they were talking about getting rid of unnecessary positions. And my response was, why have them? Why hire people you don't need when you can hire people you do need to get out there and enforce the law? Because without them, all your other budgetary concerns are going to be null and void. 
because the bad guys, as we call them, are going to get out there and caper and victimize the citizens, and they victimize the law enforcement people. So before you consider cuts, go somewhere else with it. I saw also that over rise on the uh, Belfair sewer system, septic system, sewer system had some impact on the budget. There are people in place that should be able to watch those kinds of things. And contracts can be written for those kinds of things. If they do happen, the company responsible for the job eats most of the cost. Probably need to get somebody that can research and write grants to help you with law enforcement at least. Because for every single officer out there, there has to be a couple of, maybe three or four, clerical people to handle the paperwork they generate. Because if they did that themselves, they would never be out on the street. As a detective, I handled filings with what we call the district attorney, you call prosecuting. And half of my Monday was spent at the DA's office filing paper instead of investigating the crimes that were referred to me because we didn't have somebody that could do that. So you need to consider those types of things. When you have employees, you've got to have backup for the employees in two ways. One, on the streets is most important because if they don't do their job, nothing happens. I'll stop in just a second. Then the clerical staff to back them up is necessary. You have to consider that in your budget and find some other way to cut. Thank you. Appreciate that. You bet. Yeah, sure. Uh, just one, one clarification to let you know, sir, the Belfair sewer, the, the Belfair sewer uh, is not part of this situation. All that comes out of a different pot of money called re real estate excise tax. To the list. On the yeah, I'm just letting you know, though, that it's not, the, and it comes out of 09. It, that money can't be used for the sheriff or anything. Like that. Just wanted to express that. Okay. We have time for one more. Time for one more. Thank you. Morning, Board of Commissioners. My name is Matt Wood. I live out on Arcadia Road where we just got three inches of brand new asphalt on a really smooth, already paid for road. Um, I want to address some comments that were made yesterday during the uh, committee meeting when we were given this document right here. Uh, I want to thank two of our board members here, our commission members. Um, the, uh, the gentleman in the middle, he was very open, invited everybody to come to his office and speak to him personally. Ma'am, appreciate your comments also, okay? The third member of the committee used a bully pulpit when nobody was going to be allowed time to public comment to make attacks to the staffing of uh, other departments and other elected officials, okay? He brought up the fact that there was 28% spending increase with only 12% revenue increase. Um, Mr. Netherland, I'd like to point out to you your signs that you put up around town when uh, you ran for re-election here most recently. And I believe the wording on it says, thank you, Commissioner Netherland, for supporting law enforcement. Increase Sheriff's Office budget by 44%. 45 new vehicles. New North End Precinct. Wage increases for deputies. Eight new deputy positions funded. New patrol boat and marine deputy. Experience matters. Okay, you took credit for all these things that you now are telling the Sheriff that you looked at his budget, because you couldn't find anything in your own budget. That was the words you used. You only found a couple little things that I can remove from mine. But you said, when you looked down at, at the deputies and the, and the families in the room, that there were other ways for the sheriff to decrease his budget to not cut personnel. Okay, Your sign lists all the things that you're taking responsibility for, for his budget. Okay, So I just want to let you know, from me personally, I did not appreciate your comments yesterday, and I found them tremendously condescending to the citizens of Mason County who came here. Thank you. I need to clarify on that. Mr. Chair, I was called upon, but I wasn't sure. you can. One, one more. Right, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hold, hold. Tom. Hold on. Tom? Tom, just one second. A couple of clarifications. Excuse me. The increases that you spoke about was not in our budget or in the sheriff's budget. It was in the budget overall. Uh, number two, all those things that did occur, first of all, that sign was put up by some friends, and that's all appreciated. But all those things that did occur, did occur during my time here. But aside from all that, I actually do have an idea, and I'm going to share it with you right now, on, on, how, on how we do not take deputies off the road, all right? Currently, right now, 
and, and I shouldn't be doing this, okay? I'm the commissioner. I'm not, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the sheriff. But you know what? When we sit there and we talk about all these things and throw out numbers that just aren't correct, first of all, I'll save you a, a $1.5 million right away. What the sheriff sent you guys and sent everybody, those numbers aren't right. They have a $14 million budget. They don't have a, a $12,320,000 budget. They have a $14 million budget. They just want to leave out the $1.5 million that comes from the roads to pay directly for deputies. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money different for scaring people up. But on top of that, let me go on to how we could actually get there, because we can't. I've been doing the research on how it can actually happen without taking deputies off the road. All right? Right, right now, currently, if we were to, to not fill the positions that are already open, such as the... Uh, support services positions and stuff like that. We already did the research, and that literally comes up to 500 and some odd thousand dollars. I have the exact numbers, but wait a minute. There's also uh, further uh, parts inside their budget to where they had positions that were not filled for different parts of the year, which is another 200 and some odd thousand dollars. All right, now let's add to that the fact that you have in this county, ladies and gentlemen, we have five chiefs in this county. Five chiefs plus an undersheriff and a sheriff, all right? Out of these five chiefs, some of them have never been an officer a day in their life. But on top of that, let me explain something that, I, that we also found out. In other counties, they don't have five chiefs. If you go around and you make a phone call, let's, let's use a great one, for example, Pierce County, 800,000 people. You know how many chiefs they have? They have three. So here's how we can get there. And I'm going to interrupt you there. But no, let no, me, no let, I will. I let will. me finish. Now, how I many captains do they have? I, how many majors like do I they said, have? There's a completely different command structure. You're comparing apples and oranges. I can tell you that right now. It doesn't matter. Let, also, me, let me finish my point, okay, please? How many points are you going to make before I can counter? Let me finish my point. So if you take and lay off one of those plus the unfilled inventory, you don't have to lay off those deputies on the street. But that's a choice internally. Maybe. Because there's also a Supreme Court ruling that says that the commission actually does have the opportunity to weigh in on that. And we may. And if we do, the whole idea would be to protect the officers on the street because that's what we tried to do in the first place. There's been $1.7 million spent on outsourcing uh, in the last few years on the Sheriff's Department. Another $3 million in supplementals on top of what we've already given them, which has been these huge increases over the year. I've never thought of myself to be against the Sheriff's Department. I've always been trying to get them everything. And if you look at every single budget we went through, every single uh, request for addition for deputies, that was me on that list doing it. But at some point, there comes to be an end when there's no more money. And as I explained to the sheriff last year, as he put on the radio, he said that if he has any overtime, the exact statement was, if you go over your budget, you're going to have to cut personnel this year because there's no more money. You spent it all. So, so at what point can I respond? You can now, please. Okay. Um, yesterday, after you continued with business later into the day, you made a comment uh, regarding the qualifications required for sheriff, that any 18-year-old could do the job, just like you said any 18-year-old could do your job. Okay. You said that the, the department heads should be paid more because they're no. the specialists. I did not say that you should be paid more. Excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. The professionals, the professionals. Who, who, okay. work, who work for the elected folks. Okay. okay. You, bring, you bring up people who have never been law enforcement before. Okay. Is it necessary for them to be law enforcement to be the professional in their subject matter? Okay. You can't, you can't say one thing yesterday and say one thing today. Okay. Say, okay. It, it's, no, no. It's, it's, it's apples and oranges. Okay, you cannot use the fact they're not all commission staff. Okay, because yesterday you said the sheriff doesn't even need to be commissioned. Any 18-year-old can can be sheriff. Okay, nobody else was. Very few people were here in the room to hear you say that. You didn't say it when all the deputies were here yesterday. Okay. Well, so okay, the next thing is, like I said, if you want to start comparing agencies, go to Pierce County. Ask them how many captains they have. Ask them how many majors they have. Okay, it's a completely different command structure. Okay, just because a title says one thing doesn't mean that it equates straight across the board. Okay, and I'm going to say this in front of everybody. All the elected officials except for the judges and the prosecuting attorneys don't have to have the specialty. If you're 18 and you are uh, a registered voter, you can apply for those positions. It doesn't matter if you have no experience at all. You apply for those positions and you win it by election, not by how much knowledge you have or your education background. That goes from me, and that's what I said yesterday. Nobody's holding anybody out in particular. It's all the elected officials, so except for those all, two. You just held out all the chiefs who weren't commissioned. You no, I'm saying, I'm saying you got five chiefs, and that's, three, that's two too many compared to the other counties. So if you got a lot of excess there, it should be cut at admin first and not the deputies. That's what I'm saying. Deputies should be stay on the road and keep them there. Admin first, not deputies. Tom. Thank you. Good morning.
Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Tom Davis. I'm in District 2. And um, my understanding that this is a public comment period, uh, and, and I would hope that we could allow the public to speak uh, without getting into a discussion. That would be for another venue, another forum that uh, is, is more bent to being argumentative. But I'd like to bring a little facts into this situation and how it relates to, to my efforts both with veterans and the community and public safety. In 2013, there was, uh, there was 2,504 offenses committed in, in Mason County. And these are this information I'm taking right off WASPIC. And um, that was uh, pretty much a, 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 of a high right there. There were, um, that doesn't mean that there were, uh, one person could have committed several offenses, but still there's 2,504. And then, then things started to happen in uh, 2014. We, we went down 72 offenses. And in 2015, we went down 127 offenses. And in 2016, we went down 235 offenses. This is significant. Not only did we stop the incline of, of offenses, but now we're in a downward trend. A couple of things happened that I think is attributable to this. One is, the, is, is obviously the Sheriff's Department that has restructured itself in a way that's more effective. Uh, and of course, you'd have to say that this, there's a, a certain level of deputies now that we didn't have then. And, and, and whoever wants to take credit for that, uh, be my guest. I think that's just wonderful. But there are, there's less crime going on today than there was uh, several years ago. The other thing that happened, of course, in, in March of 2014, the North County Precinct opened up. And that was good. And, and again, that's uh, credit abounds all over for that. And so, but there was one other thing that, I, I, that I, I'd like to bring to your attention. Also during the, during the beginning of this decline of crime, which is, which is not uh, a radical, so the numbers are entirely believable, it's very feasible that this should happen, uh, is we started, we started our own programs with our, our veterans community and our therapeutic courts uh, with veterans and so on, and as a result, and with the cooperation of the sheriff's office, who were my mentors at the time, uh, we 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 saw 58 people, and 56 of them did not reoffend, and uh, they most of them had a long list of history uh, of offenses. This is a wonderful example of collaboration. I keep telling people because I, you know, I'm still so impressed to this day that when I ask the sheriff for help for the vent for, for the uh, for the Veterans Mentoring and Advocacy Program, all he said to me was, what can we do to help? And that was it. And then I was standing there waiting for the next line, because there's always a string. There was no string. And so he gave me his full and absolute cooperation. And those chiefs became mentors to my veterans. And there's nothing more impressive than that. So I do not agree with everything that happens here or in the Sheriff's Department. But we need to recognize when things do work. Something is working well. When you tinker with something working well, it's not going to work better. It's probably going to work less effective. So I'd like you to keep that in mind, that there is more to the Sheriff's Department than just the Sheriff's Department. There are other uh, efforts involved that collaborate with the Sheriff's Department, and we're doing uh, uh, pretty well. I had attended a talk on something else, but I'll wait till next week now. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. Okay, having uh, gone past our 15 minutes, we have to move to item number six, which is the adoption.